This episode of the Long Run Podcast is sponsored by Sketches. Hello everybody, it's Friday night, 7 o'clock, and welcome to the Long Run Show, live stream and podcast, brought to you by the 40 Runs Running Community and our generous sponsors, Sketches. I'm Ian Wilkerson, and this week we'll be talking all sorts of stuff, marathon recovery, the toilet takes out on you, the amount of training you need to do, and lots, lots more. And myself and Chris Ford are joined by Mr. Billy Jackson. Who is now back in the game after three three years out with injury? We're going to have a chat with him about his return at the Amsterdam half last week, and it's great to see you back, mate. Thanks, mate. It's great, great to be back, and great to be online with you. Oh, it's lovely to see. Isn't it lovely to see him, Chris? I, I mean, I'll, I'll be straight up, right? I, I love that man. I think everybody knows how much I love that, but I genuinely love him, right? Like a brother. And when I saw him in Amsterdam, it was. Honestly, the highlight of the weekend to spend time with him, but more importantly, to give him a big hug. That was the best. I swear, honestly, it's better than finishing the marathon, better than doing anything. It was just seriously just to spend time with him. I love him. I, I can't say it more than that. I love him. He's an amazing. Yeah, so it's, tonight's just going to be a big love in, really. Massive. Oh, I've got to go along with that. Yeah. <laughs> go on. But what would you want to do at seven o'clock on a Friday? <laughs> but Chris, did you miss me last week? Yes, I did. I did. But I, th- I have to say, Admin did an amazing job. That's not to put you out of work, boy. But Admin did do a sterling effort last night. And actually, I've got to apologise at the front end to everybody. Last um, Right, so firstly, welcome, everybody. We're back. We're buzzing. We've got a packed show. So hold tight. Sit down. Or keep running. Whatever you want to do. But just as a heads up, we filmed this, record this, live this is a live stream that we then put out as a podcast we do that because we want your interaction and we want you involved in the show now you if you're not watching or listening to this live you can then email in to wilco long run show at gmail.com right and the reason i mention that is because we try and get guests on here but guests that are appropriate everyday runners people with real stories we're not interested in elite runners we're not interested in people who are paying us because they're trying to sell a book we're not interested in celebrities we couldn't give a monkey's and i'll be straight up with everybody right i turn people down the amount of the amount of emails we get about people wanting to come on and talk about how they ran around the world and all this sort of stuff there's other places for that and there's, that's awesome right but we ain't a media company we're not trying to sell anything we're just here because we like talking about running now, the reason I go on about this is because when we do get guests on, we usually turn up about quarter to seven and then we and we wing it. Last week, Mary Lise, who is an amazing guest, unfortunately had internet issues and the sound quality wasn't brilliant. OK, that unfortunately is out of our hands. We can't do anything about that. We're going to try and get her back on because she's an amazing guest uh, and we really like to have her on. So my point is, is sometimes I just want to apologise if the internet's a bit crap and the sound's a bit crap. That's on us. It's just the fact of we're just normal people doing a podcast, doing a live stream thing, right? We ain't professionals. We ain't a media company. We ain't got hundreds of millions behind us, like the Runners World podcast and all this. It ain't polished. It is what it is, all right? So hopefully, because people have been moaning about it this week, which I understand, but I just wanted to put out the front end and just hold my hands up and apologise, right? Because we ain't going to get it right every week. So I just want to say... Thanks along, for the support, but it is what it is. Along with that as well, that is because it is a live stream, it does mean that we welcome your uh, contributions and then you can take part as well. So if you are watching us on Facebook, if you log in on um, the um, chat.restream uh, link that Toby has put on the various um, on the various groups, then uh, when you type your question in, you know, we can see you. We can see who it is and we'll give you a name check and everything because uh, we'll answer sort of like observations from the floor as we go along. And uh, the same applies to YouTube as well. So if you've got any observations or you've got any questions as we're going along, if they're interesting, we'll talk about them. So, uh, yeah. If they're they're not, we'll we'll just ignore you. Um, uh, We've got a big shout out to Sketches. Oh, by the way, and I'm going to give Sketches more love because you'll see on Sunday, if you're not sick, because it hasn't 
come out on Sunday, the Amsterdam weekend vlog come out. We just put something out on Instagram. It's hilarious. But that basically sets the tone for the whole video. It's basically us laughing at Simon the whole weekend. Um, that comes out on Sunday. Um, but I've got to give some love to Sketches because I was wearing all their stuff over the weekend and it was super comfortable and it was it's not just running stuff. So and that's not me just plugging it because I, I don't care. I'll say what I want. But it genuinely I want a big shout out to them because they kicked me out for the weekend and the stuff was mustard. So thanks very much to the guys at Sketches and obviously supporting the channel. We've got to give some love to um Start Fitness, you can get 10% off a of Start Fitness, use the code 40 runs. I know everybody's smashing the life out of that at the moment because everyone tells me. Every time someone buys something, I get, cheers, 40 for the code. But again, I'm not getting paid out of that, right? So you crack on 10% off there. And also, don't forget, people, big thing coming. Three months' time, we're going to be live at the National Running Show. Yes, we are yes, taking over indeed. the National Running Show. We're doing a live set. We've got no idea what's going to happen. We're just going to wing it, okay? We're going to be talking about marathon training and unboxing the marathon training block, all right? But we're we're honestly just going to turn up and wing it. But that's in three months. You can get free tickets. Use the code 40 runs. Don't pay for your tickets. If you pay, if I find out you paid for a ticket, I will come around your house and sing. It is do, it is against the law to pay for a ticket for that show. We want everybody there. We want a packed show when we're on. So use the code 40 runs and get along. To the yeah, end. just remember, we're only three prime ministers away from the national running show, so exactly. Um, you want oh, to get your political. Get your tickets done. It's gone political. Um, right. So before we get into it, I've just got a burning question, Wilha. Can I ask it front end? Go on in, because uh, I know people. Uh, thanks to everybody who's already commenting um, and, and already on the um, questions and all that sort of stuff. We will get through to you, but um, a lot of people have been messaging saying, "Where's Toby's Amsterdam?" t-shirt his finishers t-shirt that i've got on here that fits me lovely um so where's your finishers t-shirt out of interest well see so, because sabrina does some amazing job at no, the weekend no. I, I, I gave it to her as a little memento of what we can... you gave it? Now, if, just because she was great no have you seen if uh, hopefully people have now seen some of this live have you seen admin she's quite uh slim and slender um toby what size did you get with your shirt a medium always again and, and how well did it fit i uh, think fantastic no tell the truth toby he was it was brilliant no tell the truth toby no it's the truth yeah no it wasn't it was, it was. right so people it was spray on yeah he couldn't even get it on over his head that's the truth and he's giving it to admin to wear it because he couldn't even get it over his head the boy you got you you finally realized that you need to go large or extra large in your race tops didn't you? no it's fine I just gave it away because I'm that kind of person. I'm kind. You're not. He's such a liar. Bill, did they give you a finishers T-shirt for the half? Nah. They didn't? Nah. You could have had one, but you had to pay for it. Oh. How much? I think it was about a score. That's a lot, isn't it? Oh, yeah. uh, for anybody in Peru, that's £20. Because we get a lot, Bill, we've got a lot of listeners in Peru, and they, yeah. they don't understand what, you know, the terminology. <laughs> they don't understand <laughs> what top the accent. Oh, look, number, hang on, hold tight. Who's this? Number fan, number one fan from Malta, where it is mandatory to listen to this show. <laughs> He's listening to it from Malta. If you're new to this show, since we started, basically we became the biggest podcast, not just the running podcast, the biggest podcast in Malta. We are now officially a national treasure of Malta. And when you go to Malta, when you walk through the airport, when you when you get there, there's all our merchandise in the airport, you'll see it. There's all like finishers, T-shirts from Amsterdam, pictures of Wilco, Al, Hayden, Admin and that. There's nothing of Tobe. Um, but there's, there's, a, me. there's, a, there's a merch store as you come into Malta Airport now because we're now a national treasure <laughs> in Malta. Uh, my size my size is small for David who was asking. My size is small. small right, job. Wilco, come on, get us back on. <laughs> back on song. Yeah, there was just a couple of little things that I wanted to talk about, um, issues and things that we touched upon the other week, the latest with the Brighton Marathon. Oh, don't go, people. Don't sign up. Um, there was a uh, Brighton... Uh, if you don't know, there are issues with uh, grounded events and owing people money, including the guy who won last year. And I know, we know that um, there are many members of the uh, 40 Runs community who, uh, are, in, um, who are owed money uh, by them. And Brighton Council have said that... Um, the uh, organisers will have to pay their debts. Um, to, it says to this year's winners, this is a story from the uh, Brighton Argus, the uh, local paper down there. 
um, that they will have to pay their debts to this year's winners before they can return for the 2023 event. So we don't, it's unclear whether that is um, other money that grounded events owe people regarding other events, which was um, the Ragnar relay that didn't happen that people are still owed money for. But um, it does seem that um, the council are aware of what's going on and they are, that's good news. We want those yeah, people to get their got, money. You know, it, it doesn't look great, does I it? I mean, people. I certainly wouldn't be uh, forking no. out any money. I'd swerve. I'd swerve Brighton for now, guys. Until uh, sorry. Oh, by the way, uh, we are doing this Saturday show. Anybody asking? We're there both days. 40 runs is there both days. But the, we're live on Saturday. Sorry, we'll go carry on. Yeah, so uh, what are we doing Saturday? All oh, right, okay. We're Saturday. And then after, after the show, we're doing a shakeout run. So if anybody wants to come along... Hang about. We're gonna we're gonna be going uh, for just a five k um, trot. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it a run to be honest. But we just we're gonna be going for a little bit of a run afterwards. Uh, more details of that will be posted um, soon. But we are going to be doing a shakeout run after the show closes. So we want again hang about. Bring your running kit. You can get to run with Wilco. Uh, you can get to run with Tobe and talk about his uh, need for extra large t-shirts. Bill might be making a guest appearance. You never know. But the rest of the team's going to be there, and we hope you guys are going to be there. So that's that's coming as well. Um, but, yeah, sorry, Wilco, carry on. No, that's all right. You don't have to apologise to me, mate. It's your name above the door. You can talk about what you like. <laughs> um, the other the other big story was um, Ailish McColgan, 150 yards short at the Great Scottish Run when she broke the British that's 10K gutting, record, you know. That's kind. That, oh, well, this Fair is the thing. Her. I mean, if you see the quotes about, you know, yeah. she's like, these things happen. You know, such is life. Right? She was very uh, conciliatory. Oh, well, I it think was... um, it's it's something that if, um, you know, obviously people have got a job to do and it's an important thing to make sure mm. that the course is right. But I wouldn't want this to be, to have fallen upon somebody who gave up their time, tried to help out. Mm. And um, this is all blown up in their face because obviously yeah. we do need people to help run these events and volunteer. There's an absolute just one of galaxy things. of people all over the country who give up their time for nothing that help us to run in these events. And if that's happened to some, if it's an unfortunate thing that's happened to somebody who's given up their time, then I feel very sorry for them. Now, Toby uh, got an email this week, didn't you, Toby? Because the Amsterdam Marathon was short, so his time was void. You got an, uh, an email this week about that, didn't you, Toby? That your time's been changed? I got an email which didn't look very official. Right. Well, who's it from? <laughs> Probably a certain um, Chris Ford. You got now, what, what was the email address? Something along the lines of TSC Amsterdam Marathon at gmail.com. I think it's definitely their official. <laughs> and what did the email say, Tope? It said that certain people have been disputing the result. Right. But, uh, I'm pleased to say that your result Just was such a liar. Happening. Just such a liar. Because Tope so, ran short. So you didn't ran... send your bank details, did you? No, Tope no, ran I short. Chris is. His, his time got short. I don't know. I've not received that official email yet, so but just um, it's good that no. they've sent that. We're doing uh, Ben. We're doing the Saturday. The show is again. I'll make it clear because uh, it's my fault for not doing it. The long run show, live show, show at the show, is live at the show on Saturday. Okay, and it's likely to be the afternoon, but we're we're trying to negotiate to change it because obviously you know I want to eat, um, but we're trying to change it. But it's going to be Saturday at some point. Um, hopefully no one, like, decent's on the main stage because no one will bother listening to us. Otherwise, um, we want you all there. But it's in the well, afternoon. we'd love to think that our um, our loyal followers won't have their... Um, well, if Dean... Not know, being funny, real okay. If Dean is on stage... Say, you know, Dean or Asher Smith or Paul Radcliffe or somebody, and then, you know, yeah, they flatten um, their eyelashes at them and then off off they wander to the pyramid stage. I'll be you know, straight up with you, we'll go. about with us and the people that they're with every week. Well, if Dean is on, I might even get up and walk off. Just put. I might, yeah. Yeah. I will uh, definitely come and see us then. If it clashes with Dean or anything, he's not going to be there. <laughs> but more importantly, gig. just come to the shakeout run afterwards. Uh, right. So come on, let's talk about. I don't even know what we're going to be talking about this week, but let's talk about it. We well, got no, Bill because on. I didn't bother Bill. sending you a list today because you never read them. Let's talk to Bill because we've got Bill on. <laughs> let's talk. To... Oh no, I want you to. Say, I want you to talk one more thing. One more thing. Amsterdam. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I saw the video, mm. and you had them sleeves on. Oh, right. This is quality. Right, now, so I've always wondered what all these, what's the crack about all these sleeves. Right. So I want you okay, to Okay, right. Me. So just put this out there, right? I paid six ninety nine for those. 
Simon pays six ninety nine. Saw running compression arm sleeves are thirty eight pounds. It's daylight robbery. I don't want anybody unless because this saw running is sending them all to these like elite runners. They don't care about everyday runners, right? Saw running. They just send it to elite runners. Anybody who runs under three hours or whatever. They just or whoever you know you are on Instagram. They send it to you, right? Whatever. But they try to charge thirty eight quid. We spent six ninety nine on these things from Amazon. They were blinding. The reason we wore them is because we wanted to stay warm in the first sort of half of the race. Yeah, it wasn't any performance-based thing because I, I'm, you know, whatever on the fence on compression. People say it works. People say it doesn't work. Um, whatever, right? I'm here or there. The reason, the sole reason we wore it, because the morning this time of the year, you know what it's like. It starts cold. And then you, you usually, by the time you finish whatever you're doing, it, the temperatures raise quite quite significantly. So um, we didn't have bag drop or anything like that. So we just, we put them on literally to regulate our heat at the start of the race. So where we was warm at the start, we wanted to hold some of that heat in. Uh, and that's why we wore them. You'll see that I actually also started with gloves. And ba- effectively over the first, you know, half of the race, the 13 miles, I just lost, lost them. That's the only reason I did it was to keep, I wore a vest because I wanted to optimize my body temperature. Um, but I wore them to, to just try and keep some of that warmth to start with. So I didn't, I didn't start cold. That's why so is that I wore the point them. of them then. Well, no, there's, there's the argument about compression and, and blood supply and aerodynamics and all this other gump they come out with, right? There's loads of stuff you can read about compression, arm sleeves and leg sleeves. So for some people, they work really, really well. Okay. And I'm not criticizing them any shape or form. But the only reason I wore them, I wasn't looking to get a performance gain, although you could argue that it was a performance gain because I was starting with my body temperature at a place that I wanted to, um, was literally just to just to keep my core body temperature a little bit higher so I was starting a little bit warmer. That's all, that's the only reason I did it because I wasn't wearing a, a T-shirt like Toby was, his extra large one. I was wearing a vest. I got the guns out um, and I did that. And, and they really helped for me. They, they really helped for me. But I only paid six ninety nine on Amazon. Okay, there was nothing more than that, and I and I dispute that there's any difference between the stuff on Amazon and saw running because it's the same stuff, isn't it? I'm not being funny, but it's got to be the same gear. They can tell you this is made from some scientific thing, but the, the reason you know what they're trying to do in terms of the blood flow regulation and that lot, they're doing the same sort of principle, right? It's different if it's got something woven into the material, like the stuff from Chimera and things like that. That's different. Mm. But, you know, I mean, maybe they do at uh, Saw and I'm doing a disservice, so my bad. I just right, thought but... you wanted to look like Mo Farah. I just thought that's... No, what it, it, I, I was... Co- I'll be honest with you, I don't like wearing, running in a vest. I'm I'm very body conscious and I don't yeah, like running too. in I a can. vest, you know. I, I, it's something I don't enjoy doing, but, you know, I'm never going to see those people again. Yeah, or I'm putting myself on YouTube and, you know, whatever. But I'm very body conscious of the way the way I feel and I don't like wearing a vest because of the, the way I am. That's just me and my hang-ups, right? So... Uh, but I wanted to wear a vest because we was running at a, a relatively um, higher effort than, let's say, normal, because we was trying to get Si, you know, this time that he wanted to do. Um, so I wanted to optimise everything I could. So I wore a vest so I could regulate my body temperature better and not overheat. Um, and to start a little bit warmer than necessarily I would have been sitting there freezing with, I tried to trap some of that heat in with the, with the arms. And that's, that's the only reason it was. It wasn't anything in terms of compression and science and all that sort of stuff. It, it, it wasn't that. So that that's why I wore them. But I do know that, you know, they do work for some of the elites. I mean, some of the leg stuff, people wear them. I used, I used to wear them on my legs, um, compression sleeves on my legs, when I was struggling um, with uh, the muscles, the pronation muscles that I try and if, – if my legs are a little bit fatigued from where – you know, I've been doing a lot of running, whatever. I, I, I will go to a calf sleeve and it, it seems to help. But when I'm racing now, racing, it's not like we're racing, you know what I mean? On race day, let's call it. I, I don't tend to wear them. Um, I, I try again to to prevent that sort of stuff. But I know people it works for, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it, it's just whatever works for you, right? So if, you, you if, if, if it, you're going to be more comfortable running in a black sack, run in a black sack, whatever works for you, right? So, but just don't pay. 38 quid at Saw Running. 
But anyway, Sports Saw Running want to sponsor this pod. So email, what's the uh, email? <laughs> Longmanshow at gmail.com. Send it in. I know you're spraying money at all these elite runners, but if you want to get involved with the everyday runner, drop yeah, us an email. There's a big market out there. Yeah, six figures. Send it in. Right, next. Next. He's running a tight ship, isn't he? We ain't mucking about it. Don't want to get on a bill. Well, go on then. Let's do it. Right, so, William. Yes. Look at that. He's such a hero of mine. Firstly... <laughs> How was Amsterdam half marathon? Good race, really, really brilliant race. If you want to go there and go for a time, it is pancake flat. Uh, the only thing is, it starts at one o'clock. Yeah. I, I like to run early in the morning, so yeah. one o'clock doesn't really work for me. But if you can do that, it's a brilliant, fast, flat course. Yeah. What was the? Yeah. Uh, was there a delay, uh, Bill? No, that was people getting all grass from me. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, did, you're right. I, I was at the um, I was at Portsmouth for the uh, Great South Runners, and I didn't get going until it was gone at like half eleven. And when you first see, oh, half eleven, you think, oh, that'd be nice, not getting up in the dark, you know, take me time, bit of breakfast, and all that yeah. sort of thing. But then you're like on the start line, you're like, oh, come on, crack on, let's go. Yeah, on. you just want to get up and get it done, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, boys. I, I like I, I like to get up and and just get going and, and get. I did get beat it. I Hayden at the uh, Great South Run on Sunday. You saw Hayden? I beat him. You beat? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he was funny when he um he was running with Fletch. He was running with Big he Fletch. Was. He was. Big shout out to I mean, the fact that the bloke had done two marathons in three weeks yeah, before that. That's by the by. Oh, hang so, on. What's it, Wilco? You're getting oh, hammered here. <laughs> Wilco, look. Oh, I from think... Martin. Yeah, I saw Martin at about the five mile part. I can confirm, I can confirm that Wilco, Wilco ran past me. More than 60% of the Great South. I admit yeah. I was going at 20% because of my calf. Well done, Wilco. Top effort, mate. Now, I was going to pull you up on this oh. because I watched last week and um, the 60% thing has become, you know, it's people are getting the wrong idea. You're telling people that I only run at 60% and that's not true. You, boy, what else you run out there? The fact is that <laughs> I enjoy running because eighty percent of the time you run at about sixty percent, <laughs> which is the optimum <laughs> effort level that I do at but everything what else that I do in your, my life. But what you there are times the other twenty percent, like when you're in a race where you do have to run a little bit faster than twenty than sixty-one percent. <laughs> well, sixty-five at least. <laughs> And said 10 miler in Pompey on Sunday was oh. one such instance. So oh, please, dear, don't, please don't be, you know, when my back's turned, please don't be telling the world that I only do 60% of stuff. No, Wilco, we, we don't. He does. He does. I, he does. You do, mate. I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched you live. Well, you can say there was technical difficulties and all that, but I know what I heard. <laughs> it must have been a great cut out. Anyway, let's get back to William. Because it's important. Yeah, I wanted to talk to Bill because, like you just yeah. said, you know, you've done Amazon, uh, Amazon, Amsterdam. <laughs> anyway, now this was your first race. This was your first race for three years. Is that right? First race for three years. Yeah, I've I've been away for three years. Um, basically, back, but sort of COVID time. Really done my back, done the discs on my back. Oh, how did you do nice. that, mate? What happened? I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Just one day woke up with it and it had completely gone. And then it was sort of one after the other. Um, it's quite a painful injury because you, you can't do anything. You can't go and cycle. You can't go and swim. Yeah. Nothing you can do at all. Um, so that was free. Put a lot of weight on. Um, lost me mojo. Uh, and then sort of looked at a picture of myself in June or July and thought, yeah, I'm in a little bit of trouble here. I need to sort myself out. So I got back into running. Signed up for Amsterdam. Uh, and yeah, here we are. I mean, fair play, so you, you, fair play. You say you got there was no sort of like operations involved or something like that. No. Was it just sort of like you just had to? No, just a bit of physio, um, bit of time off. I could have come back. You know, I probably would only been about a year out, but I completely lost. I, I went up there basically. Yeah, up there just completely switched off. Um, and I'm the type of person if I haven't been for a run on Monday or Tuesday, if I get to Wednesday, I think what's the point? Right, you know, I've got to be in a in a routine. That's just how my brain works. I'll tell you what, but you've got, I've got, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassing at the start, but to to come to come back, you know, because you know, you could, it's very easy to stay in that rut 
to so oh. to pick yourself up off the couch, right? You put weight on, with whatever it is, and then to pick yourself up and try and get out there because it is so hard. Those first couple of months of that grind of trying to get back here at it. It doesn't matter if it's running, mm. uh, cycling, swimming, whatever it is. But to have that determination and mindset is incredible. So again, I, I can only send love to you because to, to pull yourself out of that after three years and and rock it out at Amsterdam, um, I'm just so proud of you. And I, I, I'm I'm proud of anybody who's listening to this that's done that and and had a setback and big setback and you know and looked at themselves and gone, I've got to do something about this and and done it. And and fair play to everybody who's done it because I tell you what. That takes balls, you know what I mean? To to come back and 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 prove yourself and, and start that journey back and get yourself fit, get yourself healthy, you know, and help your own mental health by doing that because you are fitter, you are healthier. I mean, just yeah, just it's it's incredible to to build to everybody who's done that. It's, it's amazing. It really is. It really is. It's hard because you can't like I could have run five k. I'd do a mile and a half out, get a mile back, and and be gone. You know, I have to have to sit down at the side of the road like breathing, breathing really heavy and in a, in a bad, bad way. Mm -hmm. And then you just, but you've got to keep going because you slowly, slowly build it up. You know, one day it's 5K, a couple of weeks later you're doing four miles. And before you know it, you do get back there. You just, I mean, you did, you know, it was, you know, it's been, you know, people who know you in the 40 rounds group will know that, you know, you were very, you know, not only a very active person within the group, but also a very inspirational group. We, you know, I've, I've seen pictures of you, you know, when you're, you know, you had a lot of weight and mm. smoking fags and, you know, so was it like starting all over again? Did you use that as sort of yeah. like the motivation? Yeah. Like, well, I've done it. Basically, once. I put on sort of 70% of the weight I'd lost in the first place. I put back on. So it mm. was like going back to, I was, I was, you know, I wasn't a fast runner at all, but I, I, my old, Wait, old tight, was... hang on. I've seen you smash great North running 145, brother. So just so tight, and you and you weren't we weren't picking you up off the ground. You went, lads. No. I'll see you later. I'm off, and we and he picked us up at the finish. So carry on, boy. But we just put that out there. No, my my ultimate goal in running is to get sub four. And, yeah. and funnily enough, before the injury, I think I think I was on call. I was about six yeah, weeks out yeah, from Manchester, was, which actually got cancelled. Yeah, he was. I, I would have gone pretty well there. I'm not saying I would have done it, but I would have gone pretty well. Um, that probably didn't help with the brain switching off. So that's my goal. So basically. I've, I've gone back to the start, put 70% of the weight back on, but now I've sort of lost about four or five stone. So I'm mm. sort of, I went back to the geezer on the left in the pictures. Now I'm moving back towards the fingers on the right. Amazing. That's what I did. And, uh, you know, you've, you found that, I mean, it's not only that, but, you know, you've had a lot going on as well, haven't you? You know, you've moved house and... Yeah. Get married. Yeah, I've had a lot going on in my private married, life. I've, yeah. I've moved house, I've got married. Um, I spend a lot of time in my hot tub. That's not easy. <laughs> uh, watch a lot of motor racing yeah watch a lot of motor racing yeah so, I'm like, right there's, there's been a lot going on in my private life so where, where before i had so much time to go and do all this stuff i don't mm. have that time anymore i mean my business has grown hugely um you know getting married in july so you know your time's a lot more limited but i'm making better of that time yeah now and and if you're watching on the uh live stream you'll see that just to uh Billy's right. He's got his uh, Peloton bike and all the all the gear. You know, you, you you got into that quite a bit, didn't you? Peloton's good. Peloton's good, but as good as it is, it doesn't compare to running. Because when you're running, you're out there and you're seeing different things. I, I personally think running's a bit better for your brain. Um, Peloton's really, really good, and it has helped me coming back. But you are still looking at the wall, which for me personally doesn't doesn't so really it's a sort of so it's like a supplementary thing rather than yeah 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 it is really i mean it's, it's a brilliant bit of cross training and things like that but for, for me personally nothing beats being out there and going for a run so how did you sort of like reinvigorate yourself mentally then to get off your backside and get on again we, we went away on holiday in july and charlotte took loads of photos um looked at photo myself and thought oh mate that's that's really not good that's really, really not good. I mean, I, you know, I was huge again, basically. Um, drinking all the, not not all the time, not into excess, but you know, you get home from work and you ain't going for runs, so you have a drink. And I thought, I'm oh, just in such a such a bad run, such a bad mm -hmm. routine. I've got to turn this back around again. 
It's inspirational, really. I'm being serious. It's inspirational stuff. If you're sitting at home and you're thinking the same sort of thing, I mean, Bill's story is, is it, it just it shows you you can you can do it. So you know, if you are, you know, sitting at home and you know you've really lost your mojo and you've hit an all-time low, mm. now listen to this story because it, it's powerful. Yeah, he he got back into it and and running, running is is an amazing thing. It's the most natural walking and running is the most natural thing you can do apart from eating. Uh, which we're good at um but <laughs> yeah running and walking right seriously is the, is the most natural thing you can do so to lace up and get out the door even if it is just to start walking and then do a bit of running you know you're on that journey don't put pressure under yourself to start running and, and going really fast build yourself up like bill said it's gonna take time six to eight weeks at, at the minimum to see some form of improvement but just give yourself that that goal you know of, of whether it's signing up for something whether it's trying to get back to park run or whatever it is but listen to billy's story and take inspiration from that because you can do it and you will do it um what, we've got what would be your advice bill to anybody who sort of like might find himself in a similar sort of position just you know if you're in a community in the facebook group or whatever just have a chat with one of your mates you know check in with one of your mates one of your running mates they'll help you get back into it Think of why, you know, why you want to feel good, why you started running in the first place. You know, f forget the times you've done it in, which is hard for me to get hooked up on it. But just forget <laughs> all that. Just go out there, run and enjoy and, and feeling fit and healthy. Because at the end of it, you will feel good. I mean, that is one of the things, you know, you talked about times and, you know, that you... Chris has said, you know, he did great North running, 145, and you were thought you were on the verge of a sub four half. I mean, sometimes people find it difficult to not to get motivated because immediately they they remember what they could do and they can't mm. attain those levels you, you, you've got to let it go the time the time doesn't matter right like on sunday i was, I was looking at watching oh, i'm gutted i'm gutted but then as i got towards the end it was like people at the side of the road collapsed and i thought oh, do you know what i've, I've finished i'm okay i'm healthy i'm going home that's, you know like, what? There's a lot of ambulances at the end of that race. Right. And the main thing is we all he's come back home right. safe, and that's all that matters. He's I've got a chum in there. He's absolutely on the money, right? So if you've not seen the video uh, from our um, Amsterdam, we'll come on talk about Toby's in a minute. But in terms of um, Simon and his his journey this that weekend, right? It's a really serious point Bill made because Si was cruising along, and he was on for three forty two. And he was caning it and, and up even up to 20 odd miles. I think 21 miles is where he started drifting where, where I left him. But he said to me, he feels a bit dizzy. Right, we'll get him on, we'll talk about this, yeah. But he, he feels a bit dizzy. So that for me was alarm bells. So I I sort of hung back and it's quite comical because I was <laughs> I was walking right through the aid stations thinking he would catch me back up. But little I know, he was then walking through the same aid station. So what we was doing, <laughs> I would walk through, start running again, and then he would finish and walk through as well. So oh, we weren't gaining anyway. But I genuinely was worried about him. Um, and he, I finally got him, got hold of him, and I had, a, I had a chat with him. But he was on another planet, right? At my, <laughs> This is the best story I've ever, uh, I've ever heard, right? It, it, this is how he had no idea what day it was or where he was. At mile 25 and a half, right? So if anybody doesn't know, a marathon is 26.2 miles, okay? So we had for arguments, say, half a mile to get back to the stadium. I mean, you can literally see and where you would turn right. He's telling me that he wants a lay down. I said, why do you want a lay down at 25 and a half miles? All we got to do is walk from here mm. to the finish. You, you've done it. We, we're walking. He honestly didn't know where he was. He had absolutely no good, idea where he was, what time was it, or anything like that. So I walked it out of him. But the fact he just turned, turned by, I'm like, oh, I feel like a bit of a lay down. I went, what? I said, come on, just, just keep walking. But it's dangerous. We got into the stadium. Uh, he he wanted to pick up a jog before the stadium, just as literally by the flags. So I said, okay, but you, the audio is quiet on the video. But I am shouting at him to go slower. Right. I was shouting at him to go as slow as he can. Just jog it as slow as you can, I was saying to him. We came into the stadium. There was a geezer on the right having CPR. Right, And I said to him, just don't go mad. There's, look at that. Yeah, We're coming. We're going to finish this, but we're going to finish this in one piece. 
Marathons are hard. Half marathons are hard. 5K is hard if you ain't in the condition to do it. You've got to look after yourself. So don't be going out there and chasing times, chasing things. There's more to life, okay? And that was so clear when we came into that stadium. And I'm so pleased that I went back and got him because, honestly, to see that geezer getting sick, it was awful to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the guy was literally 100 metres from the finish and he was getting that. And it puts everything into perspective. Everything. I'm just talking running everything, right? There's more to life, even than running, people. Yeah? I'm, I don't want to be Debbie Downer again, like, you know, but seriously, Bill's made a good point. And that was that was quite scary to see that and know inside was not in the best shape, you know? To, yeah. to, and all I wanted to do was get him across the line in one piece. And it's so important. So forget those times. Don't try and be a hero just because you want to get looking good on Strava, you know, all that. Forget all that. It's, it's irrelevant, yeah? Just, just do what you can. If it's your day, it's your day. Like Tobe, you know, when the course was short, if it's if it's not your day, it ain't. Yeah, don't worry about it. This, this is this is the thing, right? So, yeah, I think um, take, take note of that, people. I think it's an important, important point. Yeah, uh, Marion, um, best advice I had was to leave the watch at, watch at home and, and forget racing with the watch. It's a good point, you know. Um, it's very hard to do that. Sorry, it's very hard to yeah, do no, that. Yeah, you're right, Bill. It is. It is. And also with that, if you, it, I, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you, but sometimes you can go off a little bit too lively and you blow up. So, you know, they, they, that's a tool to um, sometimes just give you that little bit back. I've got to give a shout, shout out to this fa Facebook user. When you're going to come to me with the live feed, I'm patiently waiting in a random. That's Hayden. Wilco, do you see last week's show? He, he, he went <laughs> to, right. So he went to a bar, right, with his lovely missus, walked into a bar. Said, oi, oi, it's uh, coming up seven o'clock. Let's go around your gaff. Uh, as your Wi Fi, bowled into the house, went upstairs. I'm just going to the Johnny. And he went in there, loaded he's up. There the, for an hour and 10 minutes talking about an hour and 10 minutes. He's in their bedroom doing the podcast. He's now in somebody's bathroom waiting. But Hayden, you're not on this week. You've got your 100th part run tomorrow, apparently. So you've got a rest. Yeah. He's got a rest. He's been banging out the races. Like his... Yeah, but he's got a half on Sunday. So big shout out to everyone who's doing Kingston. I think it's Kingston half. Yeah, there's some big races Kingston. this weekend. It's a beachy head uh, marathon as well. Oh, that's murder, that is. Um, tomorrow. I've okay. seen... Um, Bill, would you fancy from Watford that? put out some nah, pictures we... of them. Um, looking a bit muddy. It looks a bit oh. wet underfoot up there. And that huge we, we bloody hill like to that. start with as well. We done bit, did we done bits of it at Ragnar, didn't we, Bill? No, oh, it was horrible. It was It, it was, was horrible. horrible. It was honestly, anybody who does that beach, you should get a double medal for doing that because that's hard, hardcore. Now, I want to talk briefly because we, we've um, titled this podcast. And by the way, just as a heads up, we titled this podcast about three or four weeks before we actually work out what yeah, we're Yeah, he sort about. of spins a wheel and says, oh, we'll talk about it's like, this. Oh, we throw darts at the wall and go, oh, yeah, that'll do this week. But. In general, the reason we're going to do, so we want to talk to Tobe because Tobe this week uh, managed, even though the course was short and record short, and he's had that official email from um, whatever it was called dot com. Um, his his time was un unbelievable. If you see, so a lot of people again, thank you for the nice comments on that video. I was genuinely, genuinely, I I, I was emotional about Tobe's time because he, he he just he just went for it and and he got and he got um and he got his time. We're going to talk about it quickly now, but just as a heads up, we're going to be doing something kind of awesome, and it's going to be coming out in the next whenever. But we're now because um, this thing's gone mental. We're going to be doing a few bonus episodes, okay? That are going to be coming your way. So watch out for them. They're going to be a little bit shorter. They're going to be not as boring as the Running Well Pod uh, Runners Well podcast, where they talk for twenty eight minutes and send you to sleep. Uh, that's by the way what Hayden said, not anything like that. Yeah. But you can make your own mind. Hayden Harbour. Yeah, Hayden Harbour said that. Um, sorry, Hayden. Um, but they're going to be about half hour, right? So they're going to be a, a condensed version. They're not going to be filmed live, um, but we're going to focus in on a couple of topics. And what the first one, which is going to be awesome, is going to be talking about Toby's, um, how he managed, still don't know, um, to pull out a, what was, uh, was it 3.44 marathon with no training? But the And what was that in terms of a PB, Toby? Was it a 10, 15 minute PB? What was it? Uh, just shy of 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, just shy of 10 minute PB. And you're, um, but w the most important part is he, he literally did almost no training. 
Um, How much rain did you do, Tobe? Uh, yeah, Tobe. Let's get a little snippet now to tease the viewers. We tried to average it out on the plane journey home. So Sabrina was, was asking me. So we added up the um, the 12 weeks prior to and divided it out. And it, I think it was just over 20 miles a week. It average. Out being. Some of them, I think the lowest was four miles in a week. <laughs> and, then, and then the highest was about 35. I suppose yeah. the thing is, Chris, that it depends on the person how much training you need to do and how much sort of regular fitness you have, and there's no sort of correct answer, is there? Well, yes, I, I take your point, and I, and I kind of agree with it. There is obviously scientific evidence that shows that you know over a significant, you know, sixteen week period for marathon training or whatever, roughly, let's just say roughly, that you are going to make a a, a a relatively substantial gain in terms of your fitness and you know whatnot. So you're in a state that you are able to do an endurance based event. Um, you know, you're working on different things and you know, all that kind of stuff. We are going to the things of that, but it does also highlight what Toby's done with no training that some people are just able to go out and run or bike, whatever you call it. Is it cycling Toby? whatever you do, um, biking, out swimming, whatever that, whatever that event is, people, the human body, human beings, have a natural talent for certain things yeah mine is to eat crisps so there's certain things that some humans can do and do well with little training yeah and annoyingly toby and i mean really annoyingly toby has the ability to run marathons with doing hardly any training so let's just compare the two right simon was you know doing 50 mile weeks he was doing <laughs> tempo runs he was doing, you know, interval training. He was doing long runs. He was doing, you know, goal pace. He did a 16 mile or all the goal pace. Felt like he could have carried on to 26. He was, you know, doing his cross training. He was eating well, home cooked meals, balancing it out, hydrating everything. Hit the wall at 21. So five miles one week, eating pizza. And just to give you a heads up, he had a ruby, you know, on the Friday. And then at the the worst that's food a curry. That's an yeah, Indian sorry, meal. For our guys in, in <laughs> that's a curry. He's had a ruby. He had the most obnoxious diet on Saturday. I've never seen someone eat so much rubbish. And then pushes out three forty four. And the most annoying thing, the most annoying thing in the world, he looked like he ain't done nothing. Right? If again, watch the video on Sunday. He's bowling through the airport. Like he'd done part run. Like, you know, remember Hayden when Hayden done Berlin, uh, whatever it was, 3.30, and it looked like he ain't broke a sweat. Tobe was like that after me. And But the thing is, the difference is Hayden had done some training. Tobe had done no training, like zero, relative to, to compare the two. So, Tobe, I think what you listeners want to know is, how the hell did you do it? I don't actually know. <laughs> 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 I don't know. He, don't. he doesn't know. So, he Tobe, doesn't... well, the thing is, do you want to? Would you rather live your life like you did for the last 16 weeks and run 344, or get your head down, do a comprehensive marathon plan with all the strength and core and the tempos and all that sort of thing and follow something as best as you can for 16 weeks? And then smash out a bigger time, or would you rather have the time and just potter about and eat pizza and not worry about it? I mean, I'd love to eat what I want. I mean, what I normally do. Um, yeah, I know it's hard. I mean, to be honest, that doing that on little to no training is kind of spurring me on to see what's possible. No, is no, that that's a lie. Me? That's a lie. Because Wilco, I'm going to grass him up on Wednesday. He said. Now I've done that. Now I'm going to do less miles and eat more because on paper that means I'm going to do 3:30. That's his theory. Oh, that's the it? way it's sort of like. Going yeah, he's going the other way. So he's going to run even less if it's possible and eat more because in his theory he's going to do a longer taper of 12 weeks because he reckons he had a 10 week taper, and he's going to eat more and do less because that's what he reckons. And I think. And then he'll just eat. <laughs> yeah, then he's just getting up eating and doing no running. Bill, to be fair, Bill, it sounds like a good training plan, doesn't it? Oh, he's writing my marathon training plan. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It's good value as well. Won't take it, Mum. No. Uh, I think I've got it here somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> Bit of paper. Send it over. It's amazing though, isn't it? You've, it's, but as you say, it's, I think someone just wrote it said in the comments, it's more 
it's more that mental aspect. Mm. It's having that mental toughness to to like. Even I think before, it's having the confidence. Doing? Yeah, you know, I've confident. done two. You know, I've I've got my third marathon next week, and I think it's having the confidence behind you that oh well, I've run this amount of money, I've done this training and all that sort of thing. I would struggle if I. I mean, I had I had I got um. I got the Rona after the Great North Round. I had two weeks, so I didn't do much at all. And I'm very conscious of that. Now, if I had a, you know, Toby would be the first to admit that he would have liked to have done more running, but he had all sorts of troubles and sorts of issues. Hmm. But, I mean, if you if you get to that stage, you want, I want that mental reassurance. So when I'm on that start line that, well, I've done a couple of 20 milers, so I've done a 16. If I... If I can get that far and I do me fuel all right and I don't go mad, then I'm going to have mm-hmm. a good time and I'm going to get get round. I mean, I think it's the if I had a if I had a program that had gone so wrong, then I would have sit. I'd you know, when do you think? Well, I, 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 I was like that, uh, uh, Wilco, um, because of obviously with what I had, you know, COVID, like you, and then. Uh, that put me out of action and I had, you know, then a shocking car. I, I, I started off even on Saturday, Sunday morning. I had a rotten headache uh, when we started off and I was genuinely anxious before we started the race. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to get. And it, and it's a good point. Having that confidence to the fact of, right, I've just done a, you know, whether it's 18, 20s, whatever, there's much business in it, you know, but because I effectively missed the last five or six weeks, roughly, um, I had that nervousness in me. What What, what am I going to get? And and if and if I was on the start line and I'd you know <laughs> rocked out, poor old side. But if I'd done the similar sort of stuff, you know, because I was meant to go up the fifty miles, you know, do bang out the twenty mile and all this, you know, or whatever he was going to do, eighty miles at goal. Mm. Um, I'd have had that confidence to go into that and, and run at the pace that we needed, looking good in my arm sleeves, uh, and, and you know, just having an awesome day. But I was genuinely apprehensive. Because I didn't know what, what I was going to get because I didn't have that to lean back on. So I, I don't know how Tobe can do that because mentally, but I don't know. Conversely, I if capacity. you do that, if, you, if you're in that position where you're a little bit more happy, you know, in many ways, the pressure comes off. Because yeah, then I, you I, think, I'm not going to go and smash, you know, yeah. I might say, I'll just go, have a good day, support my mate, which is what I did. Enjoy the day. My my methodology for the day was take size deep into the race as I could on his pace, right? I got him to 16 miles and I said, right, you you crack on here. I'm going to basically hold this pace and you push on. That didn't happen. I held pace. I held with him. 18 miles, same principle. I held. But I did say, right, well, I'm now going to drop back because that's the other side of it. I You know, I, I didn't want to push on. I go back to my point about the geezer in the stadium. I knew that I hadn't, I, I'd not been well. I knew that that week I'd had a shocking cold and I knew that my chest was still wheezy. So mm. my plan was always to drop to 10 minute miles, whatever. I was running about 9.40, but basically run 10 minute miles and come under just under four hours because I had pace because we ran him so deep. Um, but I didn't care. I mean, I really, uh, I really didn't care. And at mile 22, uh, or no, was it mile two? Whenever it was, I, I was going along and I was like, and I, I won't say the words that I, that I said because this is a family show. But basically, I stopped running and went, oh, it. Mm. And I said it out loud because it was just no point trying to. And I said to myself, why am I trying to go for a sub four like marathon? It, it makes no difference. My mate's struggling behind me. What what the hell am I doing here? And I actually shouted at myself and said, oh, it. And, and, I, and I stepped out and that was it for me. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it, you, you are right. There's that thing sometimes when you're on a start line, you've got that reassurance of being through the plan. So I, I don't think I could, what well, you're saying, I agree with you. I don't think I could turn up on race day like Tobe does with no training. Cause he did, don't forget, he did the same in Edinburgh, right? Mm. Let's not forget he busted out 353 in Edinburgh again on no training people this is this is not like he's just done a one off here he's got form that's right. only a six week taper though it wasn't the whole <laughs> yeah thing. It, i mean he's he yes, does but, these, but both lot. circumstances reflect your personalities anyway what because do you, you are a lot more highly strung than mr horizontal you know well, everybody has any everybody has their sort of mental st- their core mental state don't they and yeah. Toby won't worry about i've never i've never known him worry about anything 
Yeah, no, it does. What time the pizza's coming? I was about to say, it's the takeaways late. It's, yeah, when, it's when's the food coming? <laughs> but and I'll it, is, tell you what, it is more mentally than physically. I, yeah, I was going to say, Bill, it's, what it's, was you like on the start line in Amsterdam? Because again, you know, flipping it out to you, you hadn't done a race for three years. You know, you, you dragged your, yourself back. You know, what was you feeling on that start line? I was I was really, really nervous. I mean, I've done hundreds and hundreds of races, but I was really, really nervous because I just felt I ain't done it for such a long time. What am I meant to do? And I was like... But you'd you know, done the training, once, bro. Once I got going, I was fine. But, it was but just you had initial... done the training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That initial start process, until I got going, I was like mentally beating myself up a little bit. I think yeah. that's natural. I think, I think that's natural. But it's not only that as well. I mean, the fact that, you know, it's three years since you've done the race, the world's changed in the last three years and going to these races and yeah. being in the environment wouldn't have, on Sunday, would not be the same as it was the last time you did a race because everybody's a lot more conscious about being close together and huddled about. And, you know, it, it races are, are, they're getting back to normal, but they are different now. They are different. And what, also didn't help was the fact that I've run with a 140 pace for the first two miles. That, that yeah, it's not ideal. That probably didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbacks. <laughs> He's thinking, I'm going to take this geezer down. I'll have some of this. It's Bye. only a matter of time, mate. When's the, when's the next one, then? What are you up to now? Yeah, what's next, Bill? Uh, I don't know. What, I've got London, London, East London Half, or whatever it's called. You know, oh, the, yeah. I'm one. Uh, the Olympic Park one. Uh, and then that's it for this year. Hmm? That's it. Have you got you any more sort of grander ambitions? Do you want to get back in the 26.2 game? Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a deferral from London. So that I've got that in April. Right. Um, I'd like to just get that under my belt, not worry about a time, and then run same sort of this time next year and focus on the time. Yeah, really. That's uh, sort of like a two, like a, a spring and an autumn. Yeah, yeah. The autumn marathon uses a time, and the spring just, just to, you know, I realise what it's like to marathon train again, mm. get a marathon under my belt. And then kick on from there, really. And I mean, not only that, I mean, being the social animal that you are, seeing people and going to the races and seeing all your mates, seeing you them for ages and all that, that must have been a massive boost. Oh, it, it, it meant a lot because I was, you know, I was thinking about it all week. I was really nervous all week. And then when you start to see people like I saw Dean, I saw Helen and Rich, and obviously Fordy and that lot, you know, it, it, it helps so much because, like, oh, yeah, these are my mates. And you start chatting, it, it really, really helped. The social aspect helps you a lot. And and it's always like you've never been away anyway, isn't it? Of course, I thought, oh god, what are people going to think after three years? And yeah, you know, it was like you ain't seen them for a couple of days. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the amazing and got, thing. And we've got that's Ibiza amazing. to look forward to, mate. Oh yeah, yeah, that that's going to be good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm well that's up for that. That's going to be a cracking week. That is the thing about that. That is the, the amazing thing about the community and stuff like that. Is is you know sometimes you don't see somebody for you know even years, you know, because of COVID, mm -hmm. whatever. But just in general. And then, and then you'll bump into them at a race and it's like, you, you know, you, you haven't seen it for a couple of days. It's just like you're just catching up with a with an old mate. And that's that's the lovely thing about it, um, about what 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 the community is about, really. And I think that's 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 fantastic. I know it's not for everybody and, you know, whatnot, but, you know, it's, it is great still to see that those connections and and the friends that, you know, lasting friendships have been made and people coming together. And it's, it's just fabulous. It really is. And it's, it, you know, to not see somebody for a couple of years and then to turn up and it's like yeah literally like bill said you saw him like yesterday it, it, it says it all you know and that's that is the that is the amazing thing about it all and everything that um that we, that we that's do another thing in the community like you know like I, I hadn't met toby i hadn't met sabrina and it was it was like i'd known them for ages do you know what i mean we were sitting there mm -hmm. chatting it was it was it was brilliant yeah it's um yeah, it's, it's, it, it just blows my mind. It's just, you know, it's it's an incredible place to be. I think sometimes we take it for granted. Sometimes people, you know, um, underestimate the power of it and, and don't appreciate what, what, what it's all about. Um, and, and take it, take get out of it what you want to get out of it. That is my message, you know. Um, yeah, some people want to absolutely. be more involved, some people don't, you know. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a little bit there for everybody. Um, you're getting what you, you put out. Whatever you want is there for you, isn't it? Exactly, and that, and that's the thing, and it's just you know we we don't care if you're with another another running club or another Facebook group. It, it makes no difference to 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 me to to every majority of the people in in this community. We we're just all people just trying to get on in life and and have some fun and and enjoy what we're doing. Life's too bloody short. We're on this rodeo for eight seconds, as I keep saying, 
and you just you know don't be horrible to people love people support each other we're all in this together look after each other and let's just have some fun and enjoy it you know you know that's the most in the most important thing right wilco we've got we've had about six million questions yeah i just want to run through through them in five minutes oh right okay um yeah gary howland evening fellas what daily training would you recommend for wet weather winter season great question gary Road, uh, at, mile trail grip. Uh, look at my video on the Nike Pegasus Shield. Funnily enough, I've got some. Um, well, I've got. Sh- I'll be honest with you. I've got shoes. I don't know if you can see them. I've got eight pairs of shoes down there that need testing, and I've got three pairs of shoes down there that need testing. And majority of them are winter shoes. So um, yeah, Nike Pegasus is good one. The um, What's it called? The trail one, the four, the Gore-Tex is good. But the Nova Blast TR are very good as well. Hope that helps. Uh, yeah, that's good for you, Gary. Um, ben, ben Spicer, any pointers on Hyde Viz running gear? Yeah, we talked about this the other week. Um, I like the ProViz stuff. I bought a, um, oh, I've got a G-Lay. It's really good, but it ain't cheap. No, nah, um, it, it ain't cheap. We've got, some, we've got some reflective three. stuff on the store. Nice plug for the store. We've, yeah. been, we've been selling... Um, this week, a uh, couple of people have ordered the um, the long sleeve high vis, uh, uh, long sleeve, you know, yellow tops. It's called flashlight, I think it is. There's also a reflective version of that with the the club logo on. Um, but people have been buying a couple of those this week. That's a good shout. Yeah, we've get some yourself some reflective with, gear, folks. You know. Yeah, we we've got some hats with lights on. We've got a snood that's reflective. So check it out on the Forty Run store as well. That's but Pro Viz, just as a heads up, you will need to remortgage. It's like saw, overpriced. People Rod Lambert, Wilco, out. how's your Dublin Marathon training going? Well, um, yeah, I just I hinted earlier that I had a couple of weeks where I didn't do much at all because I had COVID. But apart from that, yeah, not too bad. I've got managed to get one twenty miler in. Um, I did. Um, I went for a little. Tr- I popped into the office on the South Bank yesterday, so I had a little trot round there. Did you get any town. tips for us? Did you pick up any tips? No. <laughs> oh, that's a surprise. Well, there's no one in, mate. Nobody's going to work. That's how it is. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, I went for a little bit of a trot. There was a bit of um, bit of action around down by Downing Street, but I don't know what was going on. I couldn't really mm. see what was happening. So that was an eight miler. That'll be my last decent run now because we've only got ten days to go. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, got- Mark Langhorn, he yeah, said that um, he asked. Um, he said uh, I managed to get a PB one twenty five twenty at the Great South Run. Did Wilco like last week's event? I did. I thought it was really good. Nice ten miler around the nice city and um, very flat. If you're going to go to Portsmouth and do that. I'd definitely, if it fit in with a calendar, I'd definitely do it again. Wilco, we just had Mel put up a good point. The reflective free train vests, they're very good in the winter. Um, big fan of those. So the free train vests, the reflective ones, check them out. They're, they're very good. You've got to put your phone somewhere and it acts as a reflective thing as well. So yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what you mean now. Yeah, 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 they're very good. Good shout, Mel. But yeah, I mean, reflective gear is vital this time of year if you're going to be out it, it, well, the chances are you're going to be out either early in the morning or after work and it's going to be dark. So you're going to have to need something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, during Marathon Tabor, do you guys still run the last week? Unless your name's Toby Frost. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be going I, out for a couple of trots. I, yeah, I, I like to turn my legs over um, the, the week before. Uh, nothing mental. Just I tell all my clients that. Um, it's just, just yeah. you know, don't. They love it, but I tell them not to it up. But effectively, you want to tick your legs over. Yeah, like um, I said, I did eight miles. Um, yeah. I did eight miles yesterday. I won't do as far as that. Four or five, perhaps three or four. Yeah, just run the field. See how you feel. You got you got to look after your look after your uh, your body. But more importantly, you got to look after your mind. Uh, we've got to give a shout out to everybody for Monday. Just as a spoiler alert, you didn't get in the London Marathon. But if you did, um, <laughs> email it. What's the email, Wilco? Long run show at gmail.com. Perhaps we'll do that next week. If you've got a ballot place, email us and gloat. So yeah, just gloat. I'm going and you yeah, are just gloat. But I think most people are going to most people are going to be going to Manchester. They're going to go to Brighton, not unless um, you've had. I'm one thinking going to Belfast if I don't go in. Yeah, I think uh, in April. Oh, there's so many, isn't there? There's so there's so much to choose from. People don't get hung up on London. There's so many other good events out there. There's so many good races. I know that you know, like for example, half of the forty runs community are going to be in Ibiza. So watch out, Ibiza. Um, so there's there's that to to. so it. don't get hung up on Monday people don't get depressed it's only a marathon life's too bleeding short do don't another one yeah do it somewhere else who cares just just cowboy up and get on with it 
Blimey, look at that. Oh, there's always ride 100, Mel. Yes, there is. Um, yeah. All the best for that. I'm, I'm not doing no training for your bike. <laughs> Yeah, so no, then when we do riding a hundred miles with no training, we'll be yeah, doing, that, doing that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be our next. That'd be we could. Yeah, next podcast title: How to ride a hundred miles with no training, and uh, yeah, see what happens. What's the worst? Blimey, crap, we've done an hour of what? Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, usual, really. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, thanks ever so much. You know, thanks for thanks for your company. Um, cheers, Bill. Lovely to oh, see thanks you. Thanks for having me. It's been brilliant. Great to yeah. see you back in the game, mate. I'm looking thanks, forward to seeing you face to face at some sort of get together in the we'll next a few months or so. It's lovely to see you. Um, thanks ever so much for your company today, uh, this evening, and for Toby to looking after all the technical sort of stuff. Um, big shout out to Sketches for all their support, our thanks, sponsors, you. and uh, and to you, our listeners, for your questions and your attention. Thank you very much for spending your time with us. We are on Facebook and YouTube every Friday at 7 p.m. And if you can't catch us live, then you can find us on your podcast provider of choice, whether that's Apple, Amazon, Spotify. So you can listen to us when you're on your own, in your own time, when you're out on the run, whenever you like. Don't forget, if you've got a question, if you want to get in touch with us, drop us an email at longrunshow at gmail.com. Or you can always leave us a message on the 40 Rounds Facebook page. We'll probably pick that up if there's anything interesting that other people might want to talk about. Drop us a line on that. Enjoy your running this week. Stay safe. Wear your reflective gear. And we'll see you all next week.